And welcome back. The mother of a man brutally tortured, then murdered, is pleading for justice tonight. Her son was shot to death back in 2016. Five people were arrested on charges related to his death. For every crime, there's a story, and the truth matters. Here's ABC4 senior crime and punishment correspondent Marcos Ortiz with tonight's Justice Files. Old wounds are opening up for the mother of Jason Nakanichny. He was murdered four years ago. Now, the mother says the judicial system is failing her. I didn't know that Mr. Nakanichi was going to be assaulted, but however, I did lead him into the room. And once inside, Jason Nakanichni is beaten, tortured, and shot to death by several people. This was a drug-related kind of situation where some sort of uh, drug debt was owed. Five people are eventually arrested for Nakanichni's murder, and most are now sitting in prison, including Marilee Borden, who helped lure Nakanichni to the motel room. I didn't know that this person was going to be harmed when all of this occurred. I ran out of the room as soon as they assaulted him. Borden is sent to prison for up to five years and is now up for parole. I don't like it. Um, I'm not um, I'm not happy. I think she will flee. Denise Trella is Nakanichi's mother, who claims the judicial system appears to favor defendants. In addition to Borden getting paroled early, there's Corey Peterson, the alleged mastermind of the kidnapping murder. Peterson gets a plea deal from murder to manslaughter and a sentence to 25 years to prison. But the judge makes a mistake. Peterson will be resentenced. The 25 years is for murder, not manslaughter, which carries a minimum of two years in prison and no more than 20. They got more lenient. They seemed to be taking the side, particularly of Peterson, and they kept saying it was because of his cooperation. I begged Judge Hansen to reject Peterson's plea deal, and um, he didn't. He said his hands were tied um, and that things would be caught up in appeals forever. As for the others, Michael Snyder is sentenced to 25 to life in prison for murder. Allison Wells gets a 1 to 15 year prison sentence for robbery and aggravated murder. And Rodney Maxwell, who's also facing murder, is considering a plea offer and is due in court later this week. Naganichi's mother says they didn't agree to any of the plea deals. And we wanted it to go to trial because we wanted the entire story to come out but that does not guarantee that the judges or the prosecutors have to listen to what they're saying. As an advocate for homicide survivors, Brandon Merrill says the law requires victims to be notified of plea deals, but nothing more. Victims don't often get as much voice in the criminal process as I think that they should. Making families like Naganichi feel like they have no voice and angry. Towards the perpetrators, but clearly, towards the criminal justice system. We feel that there is no, um, no place for survivors, victims. The mother will get another opportunity to voice her concerns at Corey Peterson's resentencing. Now, the advocate says it's important for families caught up in something like this to attend parole hearings and voice their opposition. For the Justice Files, Marcus Ortiz, ABC4 News.